Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we will look at a summary of Canada's weather modification activities. Starting with a brief look at the preliminary discussions between 1952 and 1955, then we'll look at the deployment of the program from 1956 and then working our way up to the modern era. 1952 to 1955. A 2022 UK Freedom of Information request included an unpublished paper prepared by H. W. L. Absalm, which was a paper of the Meteorological Research Committee, MRC, London. The paper was produced in February 1954. The MRC was part of the Air Ministry, MOD. The paper titled, Artificial Production of Precipitation, contained this statement by Absalm, some reports of cloud seeding in other countries are available, those countries are, Canada, France, India, Israel, South Africa and the United Kingdom but they are not considered to contain information, which adds materially to that given in this memorandum. Therefore we know, in 2024, Canada initiated its weather modification program, 70 years ago. Another report stated, a hail suppression program was discussed by a local of the Farmers Union of Alberta in 1952. In 1955, the Knee Hill Hail Suppression Association was formed. 1956. In 1986, the Alberta Agriculture Advisory Committee on Weather Modification published a 28-page report on the potential for weather modification, which was created for the Minister of Agriculture of the Government of Alberta. The chairman of the committee was James Christie. In the executive summary it is stated that, the programs of the Alberta Research Council supported by Alberta Agriculture, have been foremost in weather modification research in Canada and the world. An operational hail suppression program financed by farmers through donations was initiated in Alberta in 1956. Scientists at the Alberta Research Council, known as the Alberta Hail Studies Group, studied hail suppression techniques and did an evaluation of suppression techniques in the period from 1956 to 1973. The 1970s. The summary states further that in 1973 the government of Alberta, upon the recommendations of a special MLA committee, established the Interim Weather Modification Board, later named the Alberta Weather Modification Board, which was given a five-year mandate, to conduct both a research and an operational hail suppression program and to evaluate these programs. Following the recommendations of the Alberta Weather Modification Board in 1979, directives were issued by the Minister of Agriculture, which led to the initiation of another five-year program in 1980. At this time, the Alberta Research Council replaced Alberta Agriculture as the manager of the programs. The council continued its hailstorm research with gradual expansion into rain augmentation and mountain snowpack programs. In 1979, the Alberta Weather Modification Board, after considering the economic potential, the results from crop insurance data, research and improved technologies, recommended the following. 1. That operational hail suppression programs be continued and that consideration be given to extending them beyond the current target boundaries. 2. That the Crown Corporation administer the programs, with the Alberta government financing the cost, for the next five years, with a view to farmers in protection areas eventually sharing costs. 3 that a government-funded research program be continued, to improve operational capabilities. There are other recommendations included. The 1980s. The major results and recommendations arising from the 1980-1985 program are provided in the reports of the Alberta Research Council and in the body of the Advisory Committee report. Based upon these results, this committee recommends that a five-year program be established in 1987, with a sixth interim year to allow further evaluation and recommendations. The 1986 Alberta report boasts, Alberta has developed a worldwide reputation in weather modification and has the nucleus of scientists to further enhance this reputation. It is stated further that, this report suggests that we should take advantage of this opportunity to make a major positive impact on agriculture and the many other industries influenced by weather. There is also a worldwide activity clarification given in the report where it is stated our program is classed as one of the leading weather modification projects in the world and it is especially rewarding when one considers there are over 40 countries conducting weather modification programs. A ground generator system east and south of Calgary was also introduced in the 1980s.
In 1985, the Weather Modification Information Act was introduced, via the Canadian Parliament where it is stated that, before commencing any weather modification activity, the person proposing to carry out the activity, shall inform the administrator in writing of a. The date and time when and the place where the activity is to be carried out, b. The names and addresses of the persons by and for whom the activity is to be carried out, c. The purpose of the activity, d. The equipment, materials, and method to be used, and e. The geographic area that may be affected. In regard to the disclosure of information, the Act states, any information obtained by the administrator, or an authorized representative of the administrator, pursuant to this Act, may be made public, or made available on request to any member of the public. The 1990s. We know the Alberta program was extended into the 1990s from the previous statement, this committee recommends that a five-year program be established in 1987 with a sixth interim year. In August 2016, the Western Wheel News outlet published an article, in which it was stated that, the Alberta Severe Weather Management Society, ASWMS, has run cloud seeding operations with the contractor, Weather Modification Incorporated, of North Dakota, since the mid-90s. Cloud seeding was an initiative of insurance companies in the province. The total cost of cloud seeding is about six million Canadian dollars per year, a single hailstorm can cost $500,000 in damage. The World Meteorological Organization, WMO, Weather Modification Register from 2006, which carries responses from various countries and was responded to by the Meteorological Service of Canada via Weather Modification Incorporated Dr. Terry W. Krauss and Stuart Koba of Environment Canada based in Toronto, Ontario, states that the 2005 and 2006 Alberta Hail Suppression Project was started in 1996, with the target area covering Locombe to High River in Alberta. Cloud seeding was carried out between June and September in those years. In July 2020, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, published an article titled, Cloud Seeders Attempt to Rescue Hailstorm Alley, from Storms by Reducing Size of Hail, in which it is stated, established in 1996, the project has five cloud seeding airplanes, three at the Spring Bank Airport and two in Red Deer, that usually fly in pairs. In September 2015, the Canada Free Pressers published an article by, Dr. Ileana johnson Poor titled, Conspiracy Theorists or Not, Many Questions Remain Unanswered. Chemtrails. Just another conspiracy theory? The reason I am bringing attention to this article is due to the accompanying image used in the article. For this image to contain or rather show persistent contrails from ordinary air traffic, it would take a huge quantity of flights, flying in random nonsensical flight patterns, something which absolutely does not occur due to pre-planned flight routes between destinations. If this was genuine aircraft pollution, flight transport would be banned. The image clearly shows weather modification activity. The doctor states public officials have admitted that aluminium flakes are dropped from planes to block the sun's rays, attempting to fix global warming. The climate change industry is an effort to fleece the public of trillions of dollars in carbon taxes across the globe, why are they spraying harmful chemicals into the atmosphere? Why have we engaged in weather modification for decades? 2016. The Western Wheel article mentioned earlier states, this year, severe weather has resulted in more than 100 weather modification flights, between June 1st and July 31st, and 220 hours of flight time. On average over the past 20 years, about 90 storms and 30 days of seeding occur between June 1st and September 15th. The CTV news site stated in July 2016 that, the insurance industry has been looking at ways, to reduce the payouts for years, including cloud seeding as a way of hail suppression. Seeding thunderstorms with silver iodide particles results in the formation of, billions of additional ice crystals, which can produce smaller ice particles. It's really tough to say if you're being successful at avoiding something. The cloud seeding that's paid for by the private insurers, we believe it's working, said Heather Mack, from the Insurance Bureau of Canada. In August, the Calgary Herald reported that, hail-fighting pilots fly into the hearts of prairie storms, to limit damage on the ground, where it is also claimed that the project has, 11 weather modification pilots. 
The Alberta Severe Weather Management Society's team of 11 pilots and the insurance industry invests about 6 million Canadian dollars in the hail suppression project per year. Also in August, the Star Tribune published an article titled, Big Gulp of Fresh, Canadian Air Limitations of Weather Modification, Where More Global Information Can Be Retrieved. 52 nations, including the USA, have weather modification programs. Tinkering with the sky, what can possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? Extreme weather events are a known side effect of weather modification activities, along with drought in areas where the atmospheric moisture has been redistributed from. Search for the Alberta, Grand Prairie flood August 2016 to see what that looks like. Global News reported cars floating, people trying to swim. Witness on flash flooding in Grand Prairie. Flooding is a common outcome of weather modification activity due to the 100% effect. 92% of weather modification activity will do what is expected, 5% will not have any effect and 3% of the activities will cause uncontrollable extreme weather events. Days after the flooding event, the Calgary Herald proudly published an article, featuring the weather modification chief pilot Jody Fisher, who works for North Dakota's Weather Modification Incorporated and carries out weather modification activity over Alberta. Every summer, he and his 11 fellow flyers at Weather Modification Incorporated fly into major storm cells to prevent the largest, most destructive hail from falling to earth. And the team has had a busy season, with Alberta seeing record-breaking rain and near-constant storms this summer. A few days after that article the CTV news outlet promoted more activity. There has been a lot of hail this summer and a team, north of Calgary, is working to minimize the damage to property through cloud seeding. At an airport between Olds and Didsbury, meteorologists keep track of thunderstorms in the province and send up planes to release silver iodide flares when things heat up. Keep in mind, a lot of money is made by not paying out on insurance claims and that is why Canadian media actively promotes the weather modification activities with a positive spin as it's good for business. You are reminded in Western media, almost daily, that you are responsible for climate chaos events, whilst those same media outlets never state that weather modification has a negative consequence, such as drought or extreme weather events. Nothing to see here, move along please. When people do speak up, such as what was seen on an advertising billboard, regarding geoengineering awareness, in August 2016, the media is quick to jump onto, the chemtrail conspiracy theory bandwagon, such as the CBC trying to convince people that a, highway billboard promotes outlandish theory that, the government is sterilizing the populace with sprayed chemicals. 2020, June 2020 and another extreme weather event hit, as reported by the global news site, Calgary begins cleanup after devastating storm causes major damage, flooding. Thousands of Calgarians are cleaning up after a thunderstorm on Saturday evening, that brought torrential rain and damaging hail, causing flash flooding. Cloud seeding planes were in the air around Calgary yesterday, but these thunderstorms were so intense, that updrafts were strong enough to produce tennis ball-sized hail, that unfortunately caused significant property damage. As always, 2 plus 2 equals what? Do you notice how the weather modification activity is never blamed for the extreme weather event? The 660 News site reported Dindia also raised concerns about cloud seeding, and is worried that they are missing the area and that is causing these heavy hailstorms. The weather is being modified, there is an extreme weather event so therefore the weather needs to be modified. Payday though. July 2020 and there is, no rest for Alberta's cloud seeders in a summer of monster hailstorms. The hailstorms that regularly batter Alberta each summer, are increasing in frequency and intensity and likely will continue to do so in years to come, according to the director of the province's cloud seeding program. So the outcome of 70 years worth of weather modification activity, is an increase in frequency and intensity of storms. Has the weather modification activity caused a tipping point in natural storm systems? In fact, according to the people doing it, more weather modification is needed, right? At least you know where the idea for the movie Geostorm comes from. The CBC News outlet hits that spot on the 27th of July, with its article titled, Cloud Seeders Attempt to Rescue Hailstorm Alley, from Storms by Reducing Size of Hail. Planes take to the skies in attempt to reduce hail from size of a golf ball to a pea. 
Classically avoiding the money made, via the alleged reduction in insurance claims, the article states, the Alberta Severe Weather Management Society is a private non-profit that was established by provincial insurance companies to create a program called the Alberta Hail Suppression Project. Non-profit is normally associated with compassionate causes and not insurance claim mitigation. The Red Deer Advocate News outlet stated, on the 29th of July that, the only cloud seeding program in Canada exists in Alberta. The Calgary CTV News site claimed in August 2020, that the storms would be a lot worse without the weather modification activity, yet we have just learnt that there is an increase in frequency and intensity of storms, which is starting to sound a little contradictory, isn't it? 2023, in July 2023, the same rhetoric appears, CTV News states Alberta hail seeding operation protects against severe storm damage. And thus, the weather modification industrial complex continues to make money. That was a summary of Canada's weather modification activity. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next time.